Hey everybody, welcome back to our burger series. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make beef tallow brioche. We all know that brioche is the best choice for a burger bun, so we're going to up the ante a little bit and replace all of the butter that's normally in a brioche with beef tallow and give it that really beefy flavor. And for those of you who aren't familiar with what beef tallow is, it's rendered beef fat. Um, so you can render that from your brisket scraps, let's say, or you can actually just purchase it at your local grocery store. So let me show you how we get the brioche going. So today we're gonna be baking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. I've got it set to 325 degrees. So that is gonna be our ideal baking temperature for the brioche. So I'm gonna be making the brioche dough in the Anchor Shroom mixer today. You can obviously do this in your KitchenAid or any other kind of stand mixer you have. The theory is all there. The process is very similar. Um, what we need to start with is very cold ingredients. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some eggs and milk right into my bowl that's already chilled. Now the reason that we're working with cold ingredients is because brioche takes a long time to mix about 20, 25, even 30 minutes. So if you start with cold ingredients, you won't run the risk of your dough getting too warm and activating the yeast too much. So I've got my milk and my eggs straight out of the cooler. So we're gonna get it set up with the, the dough roller today. Get it right up on the edge, as well as the scraper attachment. So we'll just get these blended up while I get my other ingredients out of the cooler. Okay, now I'm gonna start adding my dry ingredients. I'm working with bread flour today. For those of you who are familiar with us as a channel, we often use the Antimo Caputo double O flour. Um, that would work great in this instance as well. I'm also gonna add my salt and my yeast. All right, so we're gonna start on low speed until everything starts to become incorporated. So once everything starts to clump together, we're gonna to continue mixing for five minutes on a lower speed. So one thing to note, you'll actually want to mix this dough a day before you're actually going to bake it, and that's because we're going to let it rest in the fridge overnight. Okay, so we've got our first five minutes done. You can kind of look. It's very underdeveloped, but it is hydrated. So now we're going to develop more gluten structure, and we'll mix it for another five minutes on a higher speed. because that friction is going to raise the temperature of the dough. Let's give it a look. Okay, so we can see the dough is much smoother in appearance. It still doesn't have necessarily a really, really strong gluten structure, but if I was gonna try and do a window pane test, I'd really like to see something that is sort of improved to where it can actually stretch out a little bit without tearing too much. This could even probably go for another couple minutes. I would say this is pretty close to improved. 
an improved gluten development, meaning that it doesn't just immediately tear apart, it does stretch a little bit, but we're not getting that full window pane that we're sometimes looking for. You can kind of see. Now we need to add our sugar and our beef tallow. So let me get this back in the mixer and let me go grab my stuff out of the fridge. So this is our beef tallow. Um, at room temperature, it's somewhere between a liquid and a solid, so I like to work with it more as a solid, so chilling it. Obviously, we're gonna try and keep the temperature down, so that is ideal. So when we put these ingredients in, we're essentially trying to emulsify them into the dough, so we're not trying to overwhelm the gluten structure all at once by just whumping them all in there. We're gonna work in parts. Working on medium speed, I'm gonna add about a third of the fat. Now it's not gonna look like much in the beginning, it's just gonna look like the fat is just spinning around the bowl. It is so warm out here. This fat has already just immediately melted, so I'm gonna help encourage it a little bit just to start getting into that dough. Okay, so that first addition is going to take the longest, at least five, maybe even 10 minutes, hopefully not. Um, and that's just because we're initially making that breakthrough in the gluten structure. Once we start continually adding our sugar and fat, it will start to break up a little bit more. So we see the fat is starting to incorporate in here. Once all of that fat is pretty much gone, I'm gonna start adding my sugar. We're gonna watch this dough really relax prepare itself for more fat to be accumulated. All right, so I wanted to give you guys a look-see here. This is right before our final addition of fat. Now, it's looking a little broken, not necessarily smooth in appearance. Um, this is where you can start to really question yourself, um, but time will prove that this can emulsify. It's really quite amazing how softened it up it looks now. We're getting a lot closer. It's clumping back up into one dough ball. So we just want to make sure it's totally smooth before we pull it out. All right, I think we're pretty much there. It's holding its shape very nicely. So I'm gonna round it out a little bit. And really just smooth out that shape. If I had to guess, this dough is probably close to 80 degrees right now, which is a little on the warm side. Um, but that's just how it works when you're outside. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on a sheet pan. I'm gonna flatten it out a little bit, and we'll cover it with plastic and put it in the fridge overnight. All right, so overnight it will turn into something like this, which is actually very solid and much easier to work with. So now we're going to scale. As you may have already guessed, I've actually already scaled half of this dough so I could get it proofing and we could get on with things. But I just wanna show you how I need to shape this for our buns. All right, so I'm gonna do about 115 grams per roll. All right, so to shape these, I'm just going to press them down and fold them over so that I can start working on rolling them. And hopefully we'll get a very smooth top and a sealed bottom. Let's see how we're looking. So smooth top, no noticeably open bottom. So I'd say that's pretty much what you want. So to get that into more of a bun shape, I'm just gonna press it out a little bit and get it on our sheet pan. I'm gonna flatten them out. I'm gonna fold them over twice. I'm gonna turn 90 degrees there. 
and then we'll work. Work, 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 work. How are we looking? Pretty good. How are we looking? Pretty good. All right. Flatten them out. So now we're gonna move on to the proofing aspect. Um, I am actually going to use these as my little spacers. I've got my buns very well spaced and they're gonna grow at least twice in, in size. Um, but I need to give them room and I need to give them a house to live in. So I'm gonna use plastic wrap, but these little spice, spice knobbies are going to help keep the plastic wrap off the dough. So now we're gonna allow these to proof at room temperature. Um, you don't want the ambient room temperature to exceed 89 degrees because the fat will start melting out of the brioche and then you'll, you won't get that amazing tender crumb that you're looking for in the end. So we're just gonna let these go at their own pace. I'm not gonna tell you a, a time frame because I think it takes at least a couple hours um, if things are accelerating, that would be about the, the timeline, but otherwise, I would give yourself about four hours. So it's been about five plus hours now. Our brioche is looking bountiful and beautiful. Let's get it prepped for the smoker. Let's release them here from their proofing chamber. So these are definitely not overproofed. If anything, maybe a a little under, but that's all right. They're as big as I really want them to be. But if they're overproofed, what happens is when you push on them, the indentation stays there. You actually want it to spring back just a little bit, ideally about three quarters of the way back. So I've got some egg wash here. It's about one egg with a pinch of salt and a little bit of water and it's just gonna give a nice glossy shine. It's also gonna help sort of give us some extra color on the outside of our buns. So I'm gonna just go around the edge here. When you're making your egg wash, you just wanna make sure that you don't have any sort of, uh, I hate to call it this, but like boogers, any sort of egg white clumps, chunks. You want it to be very smooth. That way you can paint it on. Last one. I'm gonna try not to do too much egg wash because it will turn into scrambled eggs around the bottom if you're not careful. And then to top it off and give it a little extra savory flavor, I'm gonna be using some Cattleman's Grill Everything Bagel Seasoning. It's got the onion, the garlic, some extra salt, some poppy seeds. It's gonna look beautiful just by looking at them that they'll be ours and not from the store. Just a reminder, we are at 325 degrees. I'm going to set it up on the top shelf here, right in the center. All right, so we're gonna give those 15, 20 minutes to start. We're gonna turn the pan and probably give it another 10 or 15 minutes. All right, so we're about halfway through. They're really starting to look big and bountiful but they still need more color. All right, so now it's been about 35 minutes. Let's give them a look. And look at the way that those have risen. It's got some beautiful color on there. Let's check the bottoms, make sure they're not overdone. Beautiful golden. Let's pull them. Just on a quick glance, I'm noticing they're very delicate. Um, they even have a little bit of this sort of cracking along the edge, and I think that's part of the underproofing that I mentioned earlier. Um, but we just need to get the video going, so I'm not too worried about it. I know it's gonna taste awesome. Let's go ahead and just crack one open and see what it looks like. But look at this. Mm-hmm. That is very delicate. Very buttery looking. This is gonna be good. melt in your mouth good. 
I really like the everything seasoning. It's kind of adding to the savoriness of the beef tallow. It tastes buttery, even though there is no butter in there, but it's got that really nice savory flavor coming from the beef tallow. It's very unctuous. So good. Well, if you wanna take your burgers to the next level, I highly suggest that you try making your own brioche buns. And if you learn that recipe, you can go further with it. You could fry it into donuts, you can make it into sandwich loaves, whatever you wanna do. But what you should do is go over to atbbq.com, check out all the products that we use today. And if you wanna see more recipes, tips, or techniques on any burger making or anything related to grilling outdoors, check out atbbq.com slash the sauce. All Things Barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.